from the bottom of my heart, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. For watching this guy's channel. Oh Jody's channel. Jody's Corner. Oh my God. YouTube was good. It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome back to Jody's Corner. I am Jody Joe. Thank you guys so very much for watching this special video. Shout out to you guys, my supporters and subscribers and commentators and moderators and everybody else who be showing love to this channel. Thank you guys so much. Welcome. Let's go ahead and get right into the news. So it looks like my man Kevin Sujihara has come out and he has verbally let the world know. Kevin Sujihara, the not, not the s s creative president, not the vice president, not the chief executive CEO. He's the uh, of Warner Brothers. You know, he's like all the way at the top. Like all the way at the top. He's the guy. I don't agree with a lot of the choices that he's made in the past, but uh, something that he has said that has really come out and send, sending shockwaves through the system that people don't even realize yet. But that's why we're here on Jody's Corner to go ahead and solidify things. You know what I'm saying? Keep things in perspective, so to speak. And the perspective is, don't you motherfuckers forget who the freak took the DCU, put that shit on his back, and came it through the wilderness and saved that shit, bruh. I've been saying that shit for years, and now Kevin Sujihara tends to agree. This is from the Los Angeles Times. He was interviewed by Ryan Fondner, and he was asked some questions about the business strategy, streaming, uh, uh, corporate uh, corporate uh, uh, values, and, and, and uh, future projections, and AT&T acquisitions, and stuff like that. But he also asked a question about the DC Universe. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this motherfucker. Zoom on in. So you see where it says the DC Universe? See that? That's where we're going to go ahead and read. So it's really, it's really, it's really small. So the question, the interviewer said, asked Kevin, he says, the DC Universe is a key franchise for Warner Brothers. But results have been mixed. How has your strategy changed? How has your strategy changed, Kevin? Kevin, quote, he says, the upcoming slate, what is this? Get this shit out of, freak off my screen. The upcoming slate with Shazam, Joker, Wonder Woman 1984, and Birds of Prey feels like we're on the right track. We have the right people in the right jobs working on it. The universe isn't as connected as we thought it was going to be five years ago. You're seeing much more focus on individual experiences around individual characters. That's not to say we won't at some point come back to that notion of a more connected universe. But it feels like that's the right strategy for us now. So Kevin Sujihara is saying that, you know, five years ago, we really wanted this connective MCU type of thing. It was, it's obvious the way they had Zack Snyder rush everything. And he rushed, like, I would say... 25 years of Superman's history into one film and ruined it? Yeah, that shit. BBS. Weird Superman in, in Man of Steel as well. Batman murdering a kid. We already know. Suicide Squad. All that trash that came out, right? Yeah, we get it. It was a jumble mess and they were trying to make things happen too fast. And that was where they effed up. So they said they've taken a step back and they're focusing more on individual characters. Like, you know, Shazam, Wonder Woman, Birds of Prey, and the Joker film. And that's a lot. He even admits that's a lot different than what they initially planned. The universe building and stuff like the MCU, you know, cause they're in competition. Looking at you, Zachary Levy. Uh, um, so Kevin Sujihara says like, I've things have changed. We're on a more of a intimate type of relationship with our characters in our films and directors and personnel. And who's to say that later on down the line, we won't be able to come back to that form of creating universes. So that's clearly a change, right? The past DCEU want to build a universe. The current DCEU focusing on individual stories that are still in the same universe. You see what I'm saying? So I need to let you guys know that even the, the top Don of Warner Brothers notices there has been a change. 
In case some of you guys haven't been aware and paying attention to the movies that have been coming out lately, there is a huge change going on at DC Warner Brothers. And he is confirming this now. So now that we have established that there is, in fact, a change at Warner Brothers in DC, the next question to follow that is, well, I think my interviewer asked that question. If you look at the bottom of the screen, he says, what finally clicked? What happened to create such a change? How do you go from five years ago wanting to do this to five years in the future wanting to do this? Something's different. How, Kevin? What changed everything? He answers. What Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman. Nigga, what's up, bro? Yeah. <laughs> what Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman illustrated to us what you can do with these characters. God damn. Dang it, I've been telling you motherfuckers for, oh, for the longest time. I have been telling you motherfuckers, but no. Nah. So a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, I, I motivated a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all started to come on the Wonder Woman train and understand that Patty changed shit, right? But there's still some of y'all. There's some of y'all motherfuckers, oh, that didn't want to believe this shit, bruh. Oh, but now you must, you must ride with this shit, bro, because this shit is like martial law now, nigga, etched in stone, bro, right there. What Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman illustrated to us what you can do with these characters who are not Batman and Superman. <sighs> I told y'all she was going to change this motherfucker up. I told y'all. There's still motherfuckers, the code, who didn't believe that this is true. <coughs> he elaborates. Obviously, we want to get those two in the right place. He's talking about Batman and Superman. And we want strong movies around Batman and Superman. But Aquaman is a perfect example of what we can do. <sighs> what I tell you guys. I said, forget Justice League. That's a Snyder film, half of a Whedon film. It's a robot zombie Frankenstein movie. Let it die. When Wonder Woman came out, the next film you need to pay attention to is Aquaman. That will be the change that Patty made at Warner Brothers in DC. It's that Aquaman. So the new DC universe is Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Shazam moving forward. I've said it multiple mother freaking times. Before any other person on this platform, YouTube, has ever even thought about it. When they all thought Patty Jenkins was a nobody. When they all thought Gal was a nobody. When they all thought Wonder Woman was going to suck. I told you guys. And now he is admitting that God dang it. That Patty Jenkins done changed some shit up. That Gal... That she was fire. What Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman illustrated to us what you can do with these characters who are not Batman and Superman. I really want to highlight this right here from, from Kevin. This first sentence means the life to this video. It means the life to all of you superhero fans out there. Even if you're not a Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman fan, if you're a Cap, Iron Man, it doesn't matter what fan you are. If you are a fan of heroes, this is a revelation right here. Because this man, Kevin, was so hard-headed, man. He just couldn't understand how you make superhero movies. He put everything in Zack Snyder, and he let Zack Snyder do his vision. Now, whatever Zack Snyder's vision was, which was trash, in my opinion, I didn't like it. He ruined what we had, right? And now, Kevin was always there, like, why are you letting all this happen? Because he didn't understand what it took to make great hero movies. Come on, this guy sneezes a million dollars. He wipes his butt with toilet paper that you can't even buy in the store. He takes vacations probably six months out the freaking year. He probably has diamonds in his drawer that he forgot about. He's not in touch with what's going on down here. He don't know about no DC shit like that. At least that's what I believe. It's obvious to me. So for a man who's so out of touch like that because he's so high up on this business ladder... 
for him to come out and say this, what Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman illustrated to us. So what I'm what what's important to that is what he's. So let me break finish this out. He's talking. But let me change this around to what he really means. What he said was what Patty Jenkins did on Wonder Woman illustrates to us what you could do with characters who are not Batman and Superman. Bringing that down more realistically, he says, Patty Jenkins showed me that it ain't all about Batman and Superman and that if you freaking do these heroes the right way, anybody could pop off. That's basically what he's saying. Because what is the history of Warner Brothers under Kevin and whoever else before him? What was it? What are the last movies in the last 25, 30 years? Superman and Batman. We go to 1978, Richard Donner. Superman. Superman. Superman, Superman 2, Superman 3, Quest for Peace, Batman 1989, Jack Nicholson returns, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, and then reboot uh, in 2005, Christian Bale, uh, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, 2006, Superman Returns. They have been milking the shit out of Batman and Superman only for the last 30 to 40 years. And he just said, Wow. Patty really showed me that you can do something with characters who aren't Batman and Superman. Patty completely changed his way of thinking when it comes to these superheroes. This is some epic shit right here, bruh. This ain't about box office. It, it, it is about box office because the only thing Kevin cares about is the money. Bottom line, that's what he is. He's a businessman. I get that. But for him to understand that now he understands that hiring the right creators, directors, writers... And understanding that there's characters out there that we want to see. But more than that, if you make a good film, you can make new fans of heroes. I'm going to go to Marvel on this one. I didn't care about Black Panther. I didn't read his comic. I didn't care nothing about Black Panther. Once I saw him in Civil War in 2016, I'm like, this dude is cool, man. I'm feeling this guy. I like him. X-Files made me feel bad. Man, you ain't no real Black Panther fan. You only liked him just because you saw him in the movie. Only the comic book readers are the real fans. I said, what? You gonna just take it? I can't be a fan because I like him in the movie? Nah, bro, I'm a real fan. You fake. Really? So what I did, as you guys know, a, a great thing on Jody's Corner, I challenged him to a comic book uh, trivia. We had six months to prepare. I read all of Black Panther's comic books, and I destroyed him in a Black Panther trivia on his own character that he loved, and now he respects me as a Black Panther fan? Bullshit. But what the point I'm trying to make here is, I became a fan of Black Panther because not only was he good in Civil War, he was good in his own film, Black Panther. It was a good film. I knew nothing of the comic book character. I didn't even have him on my radar. And the simple fact that this good movie came out and made me like it, Almost dang near love it. Black Panther is my favorite MCU movie. I think it's the best in the MCU. I I, mean, I know it's weird. You guys don't believe me. But yeah, I got Black Panther number one, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Avengers 1, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and then Iron Man 1. That's my top six. And that's just where it is. So the fact that you can do, how do you do that? Well, what you, what you do, what you did, uh, Kevin Feige, is you... You gave a, a young black man from, from Oakland who's my age, I think he's a year younger than me, a chance. You said, here, man, do this movie. And he made that shit raw, bruh. And I love that. What did Kevin do? He said, uh, Zach Snyder not working out. Uh, all right. Patty Jenkins, okay. He took a shot on Patty and said, go ahead. Do your thing. And you came out with that masterpiece movie, Wonder Woman, and the rest is history. Wonder Woman is not just a good film on its own. Yeah, it is. It did more than that. Look at the impact that it's had. Just all, it, it, it went and appeased the masses, yeah. It made the box office, yeah. But that shit just climbed the ladder in the corporate offices of Warner Brother and it hit the freaking head of the snake in the chin like, whoa, what the freak have I been doing this whole time? God dang, Patty. All right, so Wonder Woman can do it, huh? Patty, you could. You did that. All right. Well, let's see what's up with Shazam, man. Aquaman. Uh, Birds of Prey. All this other shit they're coming out with. I don't really agree with the Birds of Prey. I think that's a little... Uh. But, hey. That is... I'm proud of that, man. That is fantastic news, man. For him to come out and say that shit, bro. So, yeah, it feels really good, man. It feels really good to to, to, to be... It feels to be solidified. And it's just over with. 
Patty Jenkins, and Gal and Wonder Woman movement saved the, the DCEU from death and turned it into what it is now. All of you guys who are DC fans, you need to put respect on this woman, Patty Jenkins' name, bruh. Because without her, I am completely... It's obvious. The DC universe would be gone. If Wonder Woman was a bad film, and they just picked a random director and said, do whatever you want with the wrong director, and it turned out... Shout out to Zack Snyder for casting Gal. Let's just keep it 100. It could have been bad, bro. There would be no universe. But now look what we have. We have all these movies to look forward to. You know where it starts. You know who deserves that initial credit. Patty Jenkins. This is something epic. Even if you didn't like Wonder Woman, you got to respect this. Even if you didn't like, even if you don't like Patty as a person, which is weird, you got to respect her. This is a respect factor here. This is not op opinion. It's like if you're a fan of this, you this is the root of it. And this is coming from the head of the snake. Man, that is amazing, man. Now, and you guys, some of you guys know how I feel about this. We know that Batman and Superman are kind of pushed to the side. We know Batman's coming out 2021, I believe. No, no date for Superman. Now, look, I ask you guys to be patient with that because this is the one thing. And if Warner Brothers is watching, I'm talking to you now. <sighs> For what she's did with Wonder Woman 84 and Wonder Woman, it would be the greatest honor. It would be the greatest gift to Patty as a reward by letting her, asking her to do the last son of Krypton movie. Whatever the title, Patty Jenkins started this from Superman. She's a fan of Richard Donner. She's a fan of Superman. It's her favorite superhero. Let Patty Jenkins direct a Superman movie, and I swear to you, not only will you have a billion-dollar movie, you will have one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. And you will make, she will make the fans of Superman cry, be joyful, hopeful. She, it is my dream to have Patty Jenkins direct the next Superman movie. I will wait. I will patient. And I'm asking you Superman fans out there too. Please. It's not about how fast you get it. It's about how good it is. If you want a good Superman movie, ride with me this on this shit, bro. Patty Jenkins for The Last Son of Krypton, bro. Patty Jenkins for Superman. Starring Henry Cavill. I'm with it. Patty and Henry. Patty can make Henry so freaking epic, bro. So, Wonder Woman, yeah. Two movies, yeah. She's already said how if she doesn't do the third Wonder Woman movie, she'll have input on it. So she's open to the idea of not doing the third. She loves Superman. She loves, she uh, respects Richard Donner. It's only right, Kevin Wonder Brothers, that Patty Jenkins, and I've been saying this for a long, I've been wanting this for a long time, that Patty Jenkins directs the next Superman movie. And I'm just, I'm just, be patient, guys. If it comes out in 2022, 2023, it's fine. I'll wait. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more of that real content. I'm Jody Joe, and I'm out this thing, man. Deuces.